Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our Thursday prayer and devotional time. I don't know about you, but it's really hard for me to adjust to this new time. Four o'clock, it starts getting, you can you know it's gonna get dark within the hour, and at five o'clock, it's dark, and it feels like it's eight o'clock. So I'm like, I'm like with many of you, it's, it's hard to adjust to this time. Yeah, um, I know for many of us, we'd rather still have daylight, but we'll get through it. If you have your Bibles, turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and I'm going to read verses 7 through 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 10. And this is Paul's vision and his revelation. Listen, this is what he writes. And I'm reading uh, right in the middle. Well, let me start with verse 7. Even considering the exceptional character of the revelations, and then period. And then this is where, this is the, the passage I want to read to you. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. I want you to think about that passage, what I just read to you. And I'm going to ask you a question. And in your mind, think about how you would respond to this. Would you rather be rescued from the pain and suffering and afflictions of life, not experience them? Or would you rather have the grace that God would give you so that you wouldn't have to go through any of them? Think about that question. Now, our natural incl inclination, I know for myself, is I'd rather have the grace and not go through it. That's why Paul, if you think about it, that's why Paul pleaded with the Lord three times, take it away from me, Lord. I don't want to deal with this. And when you go through a, a traumatic time in your life, you do the same thing and I do the same thing. Please, God, take it away from me. I don't know anybody who prays to have afflictions or when there is an affliction or pain and suffering in life is to ask God to leave it alone and let you just wallow in that and experience that. But when Paul understood what God was going to do through the pain and suffering in life, through that thorn in the flesh, he then gladly accepted his weaknesses. And that's because Paul saw the value of relying on on God's all-sufficient, all-wonderful grace and having Christ's power to dwell in him. Once we get our heads around that if God's not going to take that pain and suffering away, but he can use it either for ourselves or for other people, it makes all, all the difference in the world. You might be struggling with something going on in your life right now, and it may be pain, or it may be difficulty, it may be challenges, and you may be asking God to take it away from you. And you know something? It might not be going away. Ask God to give you the grace to handle whatever it is. And I guarantee you, not only will you learn, but you will develop a more powerful relationship with Jesus Christ, more so than you ever had, because now you're relying on him. As we go to our prayer time, I would ask that you would pray for the following individuals. We, we got notified that Steve Lasich, it's L-A-S-I-C-H, Lasich, I guess, was in Shadyside Hospital. And he had a aortic uh, dissection, which I guess most people have a, a really difficult time with that. But uh, the last email I got, he was presently stable and uh, they're asking for prayers. Also, we uplift in our prayer time the, uh, the, the, following, into the, the following families. And uh, most of us already know the phone tree went out that Ed Pass had passed away on Tuesday. 
and funeral services will be well, actually, the viewing will be this uh, this Friday, tomorrow, from 2 to 4, 6 to 8. And that's at the Bashneed Job Funeral Home over in Delmont. And uh, the funeral service will be at Faith United Methodist Church on Saturday. And the time is 10 o'clock. And you're all welcome to come and, and join us as we celebrate the life of our, our brother in Christ, Ed Past. Also, some of you may not have known yet, or you're, you're going to find out, um, right now that uh, Tom Cratterfield, Marge Cratterfield's husband, Tom passed away on Tuesday, or I'm sorry, he passed away yesterday. And uh, I know I talked to the family. I know Marge is devastated and the family's devastated. So please pray for Marge Cratterfield in your prayers as well. Funeral arrangements, um, um, memorials, it's actually going to be a memorial service that's not been planned, has not been set yet. As soon as I find out the plans for Tom Cratterfield's service, I will let you know. But as of today, when I talk to the family, they, uh, they haven't set anything up. And again, I would ask that you would pray for Betty Walters, recovering from COVID. Janine, in her fifth month of pregnancy, has preeclampsia. Dr. Fred Conley, uh, JM for uh, interview and a potential job. Also for a, a young woman who's struggling with a late, uh, she had a late term stillborn last year and is now expecting in January. Pray for the baby and pray for the mother and pray, uh, prayers for brothers and sisters needing to sell their home. Also, we uplift uh, Flash Via for continued prayers. Also, we, uh, we continue to pray for, for Sue uh, Chanosky, as Marcy Wagner's friend. And also uh, Pat Nelson, who will be transitioning off and going to Holiday Park United Methodist Church January 1st. And also we pray for Paul Ritchie, who has been appointed to be the new Greensburg District Superintendent effective January 1st. We continue to pray for Sandy Neely as she recovers from foot surgery and also Marissa Conrad. Will you join me in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity of coming before you, hearing your word and being blessed. When life overwhelms us and we feel that we can't go on, we pray in the name of Jesus that you give us the strength to handle whatever it is. And we can certainly ask that you can take it away from us. But if it's not, then give us the grace to deal with it. And may we be uh, drawn closer to you and, 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 and maybe experience you in a whole different way, knowing that we can't live our lives by ourselves and th just through our own power. We need your power. Bless us this day. Bless all those who are watching this video. And Father God, bless Faith United Methodist Church. This Sunday, the Gideons will be here. Um, Daryl will be uh, delivering a message and uh, at the beginning of, of the service. And I'll, I'll have my message as usual. And he'll talk about the Gideons. And we'll have a second offering for, uh, for our church for the Gideons. And the Gideons has always been a blessing uh, to, to ministry and has always been a blessing to me as well. Bless us this day, and will you join me in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I will see you all Sunday, and God bless you.